Hey everyone, this is Wobby Wallaby. For my upcoming farming tier list video, I thought I'd revisit Spear Whisper, also known as Dorum, for farming again. I previously tried a physical build and a magic build in the past. They both did okay, but what about a build that included both? In this video, I'll show that wacky build. The kills per minute varied because there were people around, but at one point I was able to get 176 kills per minute, which is quite high. It often fluctuated between around 120 and higher, so it was pretty consistent. This build was inspired by a comment by RJ Tarosa 29 in the Phantom Dancer farming video where I asked for off-meta farming suggestions. He was using Dorum with a zero-cast lunatic carrot pound, which was a fantastic idea. Repent X Reptar mentioned UFOs, which also got me thinking about using both. I think Lunatic Carapound would yield Great Zenny alone, but to make it a bit more unfair, having two UFOs chasing monsters around might push it a bit towards S tier. I love trying to figure out meme builds, it's one of my favorite parts of ROM, so this was definitely a lot of fun for me to try out. Should you invest in this? Stay tuned to find out. Are you playing 8K games and want to run your game 24-7 without affecting your phone or computer's performance? Try UG Phone, a 24-7 cloud emulator with ultra-low latency. Here I'm playing Genshin Impact without needing to install more than 17 gigabytes on my phone. Then I click on my device's menu to bring up a variety of options and switch to my other device. Here's my Ragnarok mobile device, where I park my character in Void and other MVP spawning places and idle here all day. There are multiple servers in Asia and one for America. There are many plans available, so check them out. If you do sign up, then use the invitation code WOBBLY to immediately get a bonus of 488 diamonds. Here I use the code, then I can use diamonds to try it out for 4 hours for free. Diamonds can also be used to get discounts on paid plans like $1 off the 7 day plan. I'll put a link in the description, thanks to Yuchi Phone for sponsoring this video. This build unfortunately requires a lot of advanced ruins more so than any farming class I've experimented with so far. I have all these ruins since I used to be a main Dorum for PvE, and I use Dorum for PvP. First you need the 3rd line Flying Frisbee Ruin for the extra UFO. Next you need the Life Bond Star Ruin with the 3rd line. Next you need the Buggy Quick Strike Ruin with a high 2nd line for move speed. Next you need a Meow Hunter Ruin, a higher 1st line is better than the 2nd line. Having your skills trigger again is quite unfair. Finally, the moving bombardment star ruin with the third line. Having a nice second line is ideal too. What makes this build funny is the UFOs moving around to track targets. This is the reason why help plans for baguetters don't do well on hunting ground maps, the targets spawn too far away, but a moving UFO can deal with that. Next, this build is really gear intensive, but if you go with the pure physical build without UFOs, it's incredibly cheap. The hardest part is one-shotting monsters with the UFOs, so my build uses all magic gear. On other maps like Komodo, it'll be much, much easier to gear up this class. Hunting ground maps have tougher monsters. First for offhand, I use Pardon Money, for the skill cooldown reduction and cast delay reduction. For card, I use Wicked Sunflower Star card for boosting my UFO damage. Next, I use Other Shore Patrol for the ignore magic defense. The random attribute also gives me more neutral attack percentage for the UFO damage. For card, I use the Poi Tata Star card, which will make your life easier, but you could also use Munak Star card for the Ignore Magic Defense. Next for Garment is the Classical Robe for the Ignore Magic Defense and Skill Damage Increase. For card, I use the Raedric Star card for the Neutral Elemental Damage Increase. Next for Footgear, I use the Order Guardian for the Magic Attack Percentage and Magic Penetration Percentage. For card, I use Flute Player Star card for the Movement Speed. Next for accessories, I use the 4-leaf clover necklace. This is the best in slot for cat UFO damage. For card, I use Moonlight Tendrillion Star card for the skill damage. For my second accessory, I use the same setup as before, and for the same reasons. Having Refine 15 makes a big difference, so definitely try to get this if you can. Next for weapon, I use the Fine Pink Fox Grass. The real MVP is the tier 5 effect to reduce the Lunatic Carrot Pound cooldown and cast delay by 1 second. This makes it nearly insta-cast. For cards, I use the Magic Paper Pattern card for the movement speed. The other card is the Shell Shirt Pet card for the Magic Crit. I want to make sure those monsters will die to the UFO. 
Next, for headwear, I use the small secret for the extra zenny. For card, I use the mistress star card so UFOs don't cost me blue gems. Next for face is lucky red packet for the extra zenny. Next is carp's wish for the extra zenny. Next is one-eyed captain for the SP recovery and movement speed boost. Next is herald of dreams for the movement speed. Next for shadow equipment, an optional one is the arcane codex for the skill delay reduction. You can also use magic shadow equipment. I don't have any so this is the best that I have. Next for Oracle Mirror, I use the Wizardry Staff for the Ignore Magic Defense. For Relic, I use Lord of Vain. Next are my skills. Here are my Witch skills. Next here are my Spiritualist skills. Catnip Meteor is the skill that influences UFO damage, which is neutral magic damage. Next here are my Summoner skills. Next here are my Spirit Summoner skills. For my auto attack, I prepare for Elite, Lunatic Carrot Pound, and Cat UFO. When I tried with Lunatic Gunner or Savage Soul, those didn't perform as well. Spamming Lunatic Carrot Pound is the way to go, which matches what RJ to Rosa 29 had experimented with. Next for Prepare for Elite, I have Stoop, Soul Bead, Curled Beetle Charge, Meow Meow, Night Vision, and Natural Rage. The Cat UFO is actually named Cat Flying Saucer Bombardment. His damage is influenced by catnip meteor damage and lasts for 20 seconds by default. With this setup, my Lunatic Carrot Pound is nearly insta-cast. This also includes the minus 10% skill delay from the cat buff. If you don't have the magic parts, it's definitely worth trying the physical part as well. It'll be much cheaper and very easy to gear. Next for attributes, I max Int, Luck, and Remaining into Vit. Lunatic Carrot Pound is strong enough that you don't need to invest in decks to one-shot stuff. Luck was used for magic crit just in case I had trouble one-shotting the Reaping Ravens. Next for stats, I have 20,000 attack and 22,000 magic attack. I have 41% penetration and magic penetration. I have 22.5% skill damage increase. I have 164.2% damage. I have 76.4% physical damage increase. I have 92% ignore defense. I have 172.8% magic damage, 88% magic damage increase, 142.5% ignore magic defense. Finally, I have 75% neutral damage increase. Next for Adventure Handbook, I unfortunately needed to cheat quite a bit by using all my deposits, since most of my gear are for physical damage users. The magic part is definitely hard, and I lacked a lot of magic gear. Next, let's try farming. I show I have 720 minutes of combat time, I showed that I have the skill cooldown and skill delay reduction by 10% cat buff on this map. For foods, I ate 6 stacks of movement speed food. I begin farming, I show some of it so you can see exactly how it behaves. The Ludentech Carrot Pound is quite nice, especially when it's insta-cast. Plus the Concentric Spirits helping cast another Ludentech Carrot Pound is great too. My UFOs also one-shot monsters, which is the toughest part of this build. One unfortunate thing is if the UFOs get too far, the Zenny doesn't come back to me, so there is a downside to the UFOs wandering too far. I set 330 minutes of offline farming. Here are a few samples of my kills per minute. It was often at 120 to 140 kills per minute. Sometimes it goes to mid 160s. The max I saw was 176. If it was at 176 the entire time, then the Zenny would have been epic, but unfortunately there were too many people around. The next day, I see I have 16.9 million Zenny, which was much more than I expected for Dorum. I scroll through my summary. I also got 946 bags of Zenny. I also show my combat time is at 0, since it was the next day when I checked. My farming didn't bleed over to the next day. 
I bring up my bag as well so you can see my final zenny there. Next here are my results. Dorum did perform better than I thought, but worse than Stella Hunter, Phantom Dancer, Gunslinger, and Lightbringer. It was able to get 19.3 million raw zenny, which wasn't terrible, but unless you had all those ruins and gear already, you should never try this. Maybe if you wanted a fifth member of your group hunting party, Dorum would be good, or if you wanted to be a troll like me and use Dorum with WFOs to show your love for the class. Despite all that and game gear, I'd say Dorum is only A rank. Investing heavily on gear doesn't always equal better outcomes. Luckily, Stella Hunters, which is very accessible to everyone, is S tier. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Here's a video that I recommend. If you want more farming videos, check out this playlist over here.